hello people welcome back to my channel so in today's video what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a logistic regression model so for that we again need a data set for analysis purposes so i have found a very interesting uh, data set it's already there in the kaggle website uh, you can download from there i'll just put the link in the description so uh, this data set is uh, called as the pima indians diabetes so uh, now what this basically data set is about or what this uh, pima indians is so pima indians is basically a tribal group which is in the north america where teenagers uh, of the female groups are prone to type 2 diabetes now if you don't know about what is type 1 and type 2 diabetes uh, these are common uh, medical terms uh, like uh, where the blood sugar level uh, is unusual so type 2 diabetes is a long term medical condition in which your body doesn't use the insulin uh, production properly causing some unusual blood sugar levels so for that purpose we have some data set uh, created by some uh, research group and uh, so how the database or data set looks like is something like this so they have collected some of the attributes from this particular tribal group so first column is the pregnancy column then the plasma level in the blood sugar uh, then this is the pressure basically uh, in blood sugar or blood pressure you have two types of uh, levels that is systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressure so this is basically the diastolic blood pressure there are certain ranges uh, of this which is normal and which is abnormal and this is basically the skin folds so in this tribal group where the uh, females of this uh, age group uh, suffers from type 2 diabetes they have a particular skin fold uh, which is characterized by this so that is basically this so this basically is the count of that particular skin fold and uh, this is the uh, test so this test is basically called as the fasting blood sugar test so uh, if you know like uh, if in your family somebody is having uh, diabetes or if it is uh, hereditary so basically they do a monthly checkup so in that report you can basically check out what are the various parameters they do for blood sugar testing so that is this and then mass is nothing but the body mass index bmi which is your uh, weight divided by height square and this is a pediatric test or it's also sometimes referred to as the uh, diabetes pedigree function so that is uh, another term uh, which is uh, related with this uh, uh, blood sugar testing and uh, this is the age group of that particular uh, females and this is the class uh, you can see uh, it consists of ones and zeros so this essentially is a uh, binary classification problem so if you don't know what is logistic regression and uh, where it is used and so on i'll just put the link in the description or in the cards somewhere above in the video so that is a uh, video describing why we require logistic regression so in that i have discussed many of the concepts that is uh, overcome uh, by the basic linear regression model that we have created in the past video okay uh, so uh, these are the uh, descriptions and uh, if you want to know more information about this type of people or this type of tribal group i have put the link here that is uh, from the britannica.com you can find this link and uh, these are the uh, various uh, parameters or the columns that are there in my data set so this i got from some domain knowledge uh, from expertise and uh, i have visited certain websites and from there i got this so these are the different uh, columns or the descriptions if you are eager to know what these things are basically so these are the things that i have currently spoke so now based on these things what we need to do is we want to create a logistic regression model so logistic regression model always squeezes the probability of classification in the range from 0 to 1 so in linear regression model one major drawback was the linear model was 
uh, extensible so it can grow in the positive direction or it can grow in the negative direction so probability value will basically squeeze this uh, input range and it will put in the range of 0 to 1 so it can fall into different probabilities okay so just make sure you watch that logistic regression conceptual video where i discuss about these things and then you can later come to this implementation okay so we uh, have this data set so in my workspace i have this data set so first i am importing some of the pandas library which we have uh, seen so far in the last videos so i just go ahead and run this matplotlib inline is just to plot my uh, function so i hope this cell is run okay and uh, then what i do is i just read the csv and just i rename the columns just for a simplicity purpose so i have pregnancy uh, column blood plasma diastolic blood pressure skin folds fasting blood sugar test body mass index pediatric test or it can be renamed as pedigree also uh, then age group and finally the class so i just go ahead and run this and i get this particular data frame so in this particular data frame you can see all values are uh, basically either integer or uh, floating point so there is no issue of any conversion using you can easily work out with this so our final column that is the class column is the uh, target so we want to uh, predict the class of any new instance uh, in the future with given these parameters so we'll be considering all of these parameters and we'll check whether these parameters collected by this research group uh, were good or not for this particular classification so uh, now what we do is we just uh, do some statistical evaluation based upon this so for that we run the df dot describe and we want to include all the parameters or you can just skip this include all so it will uh, give all the available uh, types of descriptions that are possible with this so if you closely observe this particular uh, data frame which uh, you currently see in front of your screen so uh, if you notice for pregnancy column the minimum value so we are interested in minimum 25 50 75 and max because those are the five point summaries in the minimum value the pregnancy value is zero so it can be uh, a case like the that particular female was not pregnant okay so that is one uh, uh, reason uh, you can estimate this but if you look at the blood plasma level it can never be zero so why is this showing zero because uh, there may be some discrepancies uh, while entering the data or there can be some issue that cause this value to be zero even the diastolic blood pressure it is zero skin folds that can be a reason uh, can some be anomaly or outlier which was there the fasting blood sugar that is zero even the bmi the surprising thing even that is zero then uh, so that's all about uh, this particular columns that i found something which is unusual it's not unusual about the blood sugar but uh, the things which were not supposed to be zero these things are coming as zero so that is an uh, essential problem that we need to uh, counter tackle so why it was zero or it was originally zero or uh, something like that okay so now what we do is we just look at the age column so in age column we look at the minimum value so the minimum value for that particular female is uh, 21 years and the maximum value is 81 years so uh, this is the uh, range of that particular uh, distribution that is the gaussian distribution and if you look at the 25th percentile so uh, between minimum and the 25th percentile that is the uh, first quarter that is the one fourth you can see that there are three age groups or there is a difference of three years in between this if you look at the 50th percentile there is a difference of five but if you look at 50 from 75th and from 50 to uh, maximum there is a very large uh, skewness which is observed so if you just look or whenever we plot the pair plot down the line or scatter plot we can see this particular distribution of age versus age is somewhat right skewed 
so there is more skewness towards the right so that is one inference we can draw we can draw other inferences from other columns but due to the minimum value being zero we can't be much sure about why this kind of thing happens because age groups give some kind of convincing values which we can build for our statistical evaluations okay now what we do is we just analyze the types which are there so uh, these are the different uh, types of uh, the columns so basically the data types we don't have any object if it's an object then that essentially would be a, a string value we don't have any such and uh, alternative to this is uh, you can run this thing so there is a function th this is a new function which we have not discussed so uh, this basically checks uh, whether is there any uh, not real values not real values means these integer 64 and float 64 are real numbers floating point numbers in this case i am just putting a not operator before this function so if it is true then it will uh, give out any column uh, which has any object or string type so if i just run this you basically don't get any 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 entries basically uh, the headers or the column headers that is what is there so if you just remove this you basically get that data frame back so that is the two technique by which you can uh, check this and now what we do is we just do the class counts and uh, you can see uh, from this uh, there is a huge skewness so it's not uh, equally partitioned or there is no symmetric relationship between the classes that is zeros and ones in zeros you have 500 counts and uh, in one you have 268 counts so obviously there is more skewness towards the zero class we'll analyze that why it is there okay so now uh, our time comes to do a pair plot so now we do a scatter plot based upon the data frame which we have and the kind of diagram which we uh, plot here that will be a kernel density estimate so you basically observe uh, two ribbons uh, with respect to two different classes and the hue that is basically the color that i will be putting so that will be based upon the class that is zeros and ones so based upon that we'll be getting this plot uh, it takes some time okay uh, our plot is ready so this is how our graph basically looks like and uh, let me just uh, change the theme okay so this is uh, how my plot looks like so along the diagonal you have that particular uh, column versus itself and you have till uh, all the basic columns which are there in your data set uh, now uh, there are two basic distributions or two basic gaussians that you can see uh, that is the blue one that represents the non diabetic and the orange one represents the diabetic so uh, if you just uh, look on to this first particular plot so this off diagonals are basically symmetric so that is just tilted or rotated around one particular dimension our major thing is we want to analyze the gaussians gaussians are basically along the diagonals so if you just look at the pregnancy versus pregnancy uh, uh, distribution or plot you can see that the mean value or so, uh, the median value somewhat is here so for both the distributions the mean value is somewhat centered here you can see those both are overlapping so there is no perfect separation there are some obvious outliers present in this data set that's why and you can see there is a tail which is extending for the uh, diabetic class so that uh, shows there are some outliers which are present in your data or whenever the research group or team or if whenever the data entry stuff was done there was some kind of outliers that was incurred during this process if you look at the blood plasma even now the central value that is the median value it's getting overlapped there is no perfect separation and along this uh, to, to the uh, left tail of this orange distribution you can see there are some bumps uh, which you can see uh, so that essentially shows there are some outliers present 
so interesting thing is for this diastolic blood pressure even at the left end for both the outliers are even getting overlap so that is just a superimposed distribution uh, on top of each other and even for skin folds it is surprising uh, those are also overlapping so even with other distributions also there are some outliers here so if you see some small humps or some uh, crest or troughs uh, at the tail of these two distributions towards the right or left that indicates presence of small outliers. So even with other distributions also you can see that the central value that is the median value is getting uh, overlap. Uh, if you just uh, look on to this age versus age we did some statistical analysis uh, that was here. So the median value is uh, 29 around 29 so uh, we'll just keep it as 29 if you want you can uh, go with 30 uh, if you just see the median value somewhere is around here that is that is middle of 20 and 40 that is being getting overlap so for orange distribution and for uh, the blue distribution both are getting overlap so there is no perfect separation uh, which is present in this nature of the data distribution which perfectly separates this so that is where uh, any model not only logistic regression or if you build any neural network decision tree linear regression this particular uh, data set will not have an accuracy uh, above uh, which you expect so you cannot expect any accuracy more than 80 percent or 85 percent with this kind of data regardless of whatever kind of model you use whatever fine tuning parameterization hyperparameter tuning you do if the data which is given to you is very poor and if there are some uncertainties uncertainties present uh, it is uh, that you cannot get good accuracy over this so uh, let's not do the risk analysis but we instead go ahead and build the model so from sklearn model selection i am importing the train test split for splitting my data this is same as the linear regression we saw and here the linear model that we'll be using is the logistic regression and uh, for some performance evaluation metrics uh, we want to have the confusion metrics so for that we have this so it is model is run and uh, i want to now just partition my data frame so uh, from 0 to 8 uh, that is this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so I want to partition from pregnancy to age so that goes into my training set so for that it will run from 0 to 7 n minus 1 that goes into my training set if I just print this that will be pregnancy to age and whatever is left so that is my class now here what I am doing is I am just calling the np dot ravel so it basically has all the ones and zeros so it will just return a contiguous flattened array so that it can have a perfect distribution so this is how my array looks like so this is my uh, y class which i want to predict so you can skip this option but uh, there will be some kind of uh, other problems if you don't use this so you can just try it out without calling the ravel function you can directly partition this uh, no issues uh, when I ran this before I was getting some kind of warning so that's why I just flattened this particular uh, column so it is for that and now I'm drawing the train test split so I just split the x into training and testing y into training and testing and to that I pass x and y and the test set size that I'm keeping here is 25% of the test set the rest 75% goes into training set and the random state this is 1 so uh, these things that is uh, the test set size and the random state one these are basically hyper parameters that you are uh, keeping in your model you can just change these parameters and we can see how your model behaves and what accuracy you are getting from this when i just run this it is run and if you want to see your training set this is how it partitioned uh, when you did this particular run so it will do a random partition because there is some kind of random that you want and this is uh, the training set that I have and now what I do is I just uh, 
call the or instantiate the model uh, from logistic regression and I'll call the model dot fit. So this is the warning what I was getting because uh, there was some kind of iterations that were limited. This is not an error, but it is a warning because uh, we have this flattened array. So just uh, ignore that for the time being. And uh, we just now the uh, call the Y predictor. So just predict the model and we'll check the accuracy. So the accuracy what we are getting is we have 77.6%. We can just change these parameters and we can see whether we are getting a good accuracy or not. So if we just change this and if we run this and uh, let's see our training set. Now it has changed the training on Y. It has also changed we just to the model dot fit and uh, somewhat we can have the accuracy improved but it will not go beyond 80 or 85 percent you can't expect the accuracy of 93 or uh, in that range why because this particular kind of data uh, what you have got is basically uh, poor selection of attributes or the research team could have gained even more good attributes so that uh, at least the accuracy could have improved so by this what you can observe is like uh, your model that is the logistic regression model predicts 78 around 78 percent of the uh, variance it can explain it can explain around 78 percent of the variance which is caused due to all this data distributions now here we have not done the outlier removal or uh, outlier elimination that part we have not done we have just created the model and we are analyzing this on the original data set and there are around 12% of the uh, remaining from this particular figure of the variance which your model cannot explain. Now these are caused due to poor attribute selection. Maybe we could have drawn some of the columns or uh, we could have removed the outliers. After that the accuracy could have improved somewhere around even 80-85 in that particular range. We don't give a perfect estimate but we give a range. Okay, so now we do uh, is we just print the data frame. So this is the confusion matrix that we want to build. So to this I am giving my test y and the predicted y that is from here. And the labels that I have that is uh, in my class I have zeros and ones. And on the index I want true. Uh, this is the true class and this are the predicted class. And I just run this. And you can see uh, that these are the figures that I get. So these are basically true positives. These are basically true negatives. This is false positive, false negative. So uh, for all the patients uh, or all the female uh, patients, the type 2 diabetes was correctly classified. Uh, for them, it was not uh, classified like uh, those who didn't had uh, any diabetes that was perfectly classified but there are some uh, who had uh, diabetes but those were not classified as correctly and this who didn't had any diabetes but it was said like you have diabetes so those are true negative these are different metrics in performance evaluation you can watch out my video on this also it's there in my machine learning playlist so uh, due to poor attribute selection uh, you have these many uh, things that is coming because your accuracy is not that good accuracy with 70 percent is not good for a logistic regression model it should be around 90 or 95 percent but due to poor attribute distribution you are getting this way and uh, the meme for today is we have Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That is by the great scientist Albert Einstein and your machine learning says something like this. But obviously we do some hyperparameter tuning in order to avoid this problem. Okay, so well that was all regarding the logistic regression in machine learning. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it HFA for this video, please do like, share, comment. And if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching this video.